Hello, hello. Lartanian here with the Red-Headed Turk, Reno Lost Chapter Lufania, bringing a team of Golbez, Iroha, and Eldnarsh. I'm uh, going to let you know right now that, well, this is a pretty conventional run for this kind of stage. I think Eldnarsh is seeing a lot of use for good reason. Uh, there was some stupidity toward the end that I thought would be pretty entertaining to show, so you can look forward to seeing that. Before we really get into this, be sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Both really help me in terms of supporting the channel and helping it grow. And leave a comment down below with the team you used for this fight. I'm curious to see what folks are bringing. You can also catch myself, Raw Life, and Type Zoe every Monday night at 8.30pm on the live stream. Our weekly DFO uh, show? Podcast? It's not really a podcast. We're not a podcast app. It's a live stream. We're going to do some DFO gameplay, some DFO conversation, and uh, generally have a good time. So look forward to seeing you there. So what are we doing here? We are bringing Eldnarsh, because Eldnarsh is really good in this stage. Um, Eldnarsh is honestly good in most stages, uh, it, because he just free turn efficiency, making the bosses unable to do actions, I mean, tons of defense down. Eldnarsh is just a very powerful character. Uh, but here, in particular, this is one of those stages where, well, you're allowed to delay the bosses as much as you want during parts of the fight. There are going to be parts where they insist that you let the boss take a turn. Not take an action, you can lock them down with paralysis, HP silence, terror, whatever. But if you don't let them take an action, they adopt that miss stance that we uh, remember from the last time these jokers were around. Basically, they take a whole bunch less damage from us and make us take damage on our turns with HP poison, which is just kind of annoying. So yes, you can do a zero boss turn run. Uh, Excalibur and a number of other people have already done that. It's totally a fine way to go about the fight. I just personally don't like slogging it out like that. So I'll go ahead and let them take their turns when... Uh, you know, when they come up. I'll let them try to do their mist attack. If they'll fail, they won't be able to, but that's okay. The important thing is that the mist will fall away and I'll be able to go back to living my life, happy and mist-free. As for the other two team members here, we're bringing Golbez because I love Golbez, and he works really well with Eldnarsh insofar as he's a very self-sufficient damage dealer. Uh, he keeps the you know, it keeps the damage coming, doesn't require a whole lot, so the fact that Eldnarsh brings defense down but doesn't really boost the team's damage aside from the defense down, Golbez doesn't care. He's got his own damage amps. Um, Golbez also appreciates kind of a slower, less delay-focused fight because he's a slower character, so it just kind of works out pretty nicely. Like, if this was someone like a, like a Lightning or a Garland, there'd be a little bit of kind of a counter synergy because you wouldn't be taking advantage as much of either the free Eldnarsh turn or the delays. I'm saying this knowing that I think the last time I used Eldnarsh, I used it on a team with Lightning and Garland, so, uh, what am I talking about, you know? <laughs> what, what do I know? Uh, last character here is Iroha, because, well, A, a Iroha's awesome, B, I barely have used her since pulling her, and C, she works really well with Eldnarsh and Golbez, so here we are. I'm also bringing an Eldnarsh friend, because, uh, I thought I was, I, I I was going to be a big brain and just kind of have Eldnarsh out the wazoo for this fight. It's a somewhat a tight turn count with 65 turns, but between Eldnarsh having a zillion free turns and Golbez dealing a bunch of damage every turn, his, time his turn comes up, I'm not too worried about that turn count. So, what else is there to say about this fight? Um, kind of funny. The last time we fought these guys, it was the Reno Lost Chapter, and I remember bringing a team of, I think, Lightning, Edward, and Gladio to deal with it. Which was, as you can imagine, a, kind of goofy, because, again, you have an enemy phase-focused unit like Gladio, and a enemy delay-focused unit like uh, Lightning. I like to think this team is a little bit less uh, schizophrenic, let's, get, let's say. Yeah. You will notice that because uh, Iroha isn't... Uh, she isn't really a support, a pure support character. Uh, later in the fight, our damage is going to be kind of taking a bit of a hit. But that's okay, we'll get there. The bright side is because she's not a pure support character, she does reasonable damage on her turns. Stubbornly trying to <laughs> line up that launch. Um, but uh, unfortunately because I didn't attack them they, well, you, you see, this is just kind of turning into a really lame launch 
Anyway, that, uh, is kind of doofy. I have to say, I'm actually enjoying playing Eldarch a whole lot more than I used to since they... The, I think the two big things were they changed the UI so you can actually see how long Terra and Warp last, so it kind of makes it less fiddly. And uh, probably more importantly, just my philosophy on how Eld fits into a team changed uh, for the better, because uh, frankly, I was just straight up wrong about using him as the main damage dealer, I think. I mean, it works, it just makes the fight take forever and it feels like a slog. I think it's, it's better to bring him alongside at least one other character who deals some good damage on their own, to just speed the process up. Feeling real professional being able to share that kind of tidbit with you, you know? Professional content creator. Ugh. Hindsight, I probably could have brought Queen and it would have actually given us more damage overall than Aroha, but I just, I haven't really used her. I wanted a chance to, so here we are. So here we are dealing with Mist Phase again, the damage, they delay themselves before, afterwards, which is kind of annoying because it means you have to wait longer dealing with the Mist, dealing with the damage dropping off a cliff. It's kind of a jerk thing to do, I think, having a Mist Form and then delaying it. Didn't realize that they don't break, they don't break delay when they're in the Mist Form, so I was focusing on B because I wanted to kind of keep that, you know, off turn order. Uh, basically, I want them to. I want to keep breaking them out of order so Eldarch gets as many free turns as possible because that's more free damage, and that's how we're going to deal with the 65 turn turn count. Between you and me, I probably don't need to be spamming so many HP plus with Eldarch. Uh, but as I've said in, in the past, and will continue to say, I'm an extremely. Con uh, stingy and conservative douche when it comes to using skills and using resources. So, here we go. Another HP attack. Doesn't have to be that way, but, I mean, still dealing, you know, 70k is not a terrible amount of damage. Thanks to, you know, again, thanks to Aroha and Elnarch's own defense down, it's getting hard enough. These guys have very high defense once again, I think 40,000, which is less than the centipedes, but I think it's on par with the uh, Gladio Lost Chapter bosses. Been seeing a, much, a lot of high defense bosses recently. I might try bringing save into this now that I'm thinking about it. Keeping that in mind. So. I know there's a lot of controversy in the community right now about the whole uh, Setzer thing. Oh, here we go. You're bringing in Eldnarsh. Uh, friend Eldnarsh. I uh, can't believe I was about to go into the Setzer thing. And let's not talk about the Setzer thing. We're all aware of the Setzer thing. We're not going to worry about the Setzer thing. The Setzer thing doesn't matter. Anywho. Let's use that cool Iroha plus move. Dealing decent damage because we have a burst effect on the field. God bless. And speaking of burst effects... Oh, that was good damage. 500,000. Let's see how, many, how much we do with this. Probably not as much as we can because as we you can tell, we're about to push them below their threshold again. I probably could have considered uh, waiting until they were they had already dealt with the last miss phase and just burst after that to try to blow it, you know blow away the last thirty percent of their health. But I kind of wanted to take advantage of the burst phase LD. If you've seen me play Golbez before, you know my favorite part of playing Golbez is that last like twenty five percent of their health, where I go into the summon and remove all of it using Black Dragon over and over again. So yeah, two, two, 2 million damage for a burst phase. It's not incredible for Golbez, but they did eat like half of his damage from that mist form. I hate it so much. Wait a second. Hold on. Watching this back. So we just used, uh, whatchamacallit, the, oh right. So we, you'll, you see I used phase shift there thinking, okay, we've applied the, the terror, and then they just did what they just did there. You're probably thinking, what the hell? What I didn't realize is Eldnarsh, uh, if you put a second Eldnarsh on the field, like a friend Eldnarsh, and replace the old one, whichever one applied Terror most recently is the one who it checks for. And because my other Eldnarsh used the four-turn Terror, thanks to the AA, and this one used a two-turn Terror from just Phase Shift, 
it didn't reapply terror, meaning the old, old the, my regular Eldnarsh's terror was still on there. And so it just was like, okay, well, you know, Eldnarsh isn't on the field, not the one we're looking for. And uh, so they just were able to blast us. As luck would have it, Golbez was on the field to save me from this terrible, stupid decision I made. Um, but yeah, I didn't know that about Eldnarsh. Um, in theory, if I had wanted to get the friend Eldnarsh's terror up, I would have had to AA first, which would have wasted a turn and would suck. But it's okay. Uh, we're going to get through this together, because it's time to just start chucking dragons at them. Did I just HP attack? Why the hell did I... Why? Oh, what? Oh, right, I'm, that's why. I'm cycling out to get my other Eldnarsh on the field, because as you can see, he had taken damage, and the HP requirement for this fight is 5,000. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and quickly top everyone off to make sure we don't miss that. So, like I said, a bit of a clown fiesta at the end here, because I did not know that little tidbit about Eldnarsh. Um, the more you know. I'm happy to be able to share that information with the community <laughs> because of my own ineptitude. Uh, and with that, let's put it away. God bless my fang. Cool move. Anyway, there we go. Reno Lost Chapter has been dealt with. Handily. Uh, no synergy. Hey. But we used Eldnar, so I don't know if that counts. Nice arts, dude. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Adios.